forging cyber, forging cyber security experts. Secure Ninja. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV. Now, our free preview of Secure Ninja's online Sensei series has generated such a positive reaction that we've decided to give away every single module from this Cyber Kung Fu course, featuring Larry Greenblatt, Tom Upjagrove, and me. If you like what you see and would like to experience a Secure Ninja training course in person at any of our training locations, we have some amazing time-sensitive specials for you. Just visit secureninja.com specials for all of the do not miss deals. And now here is your free module from Cyber Kung Fu for the Certified Ethical Hacker version 8. Enjoy! All right. Um Module 9, Social Engineering, uh, considered probably the most effective uh, hack uh, you can ever do. So no matter how good your, your security controls are, I don't care how strong your locks are, if I could ask you for the key and you just hand it to me, it doesn't really matter, right? So it's a con man. Um, the term social engineering has evolved over the years, so uh, when I first heard it, it was, it was Kevin Mitnick. Uh, Kevin Mitnick was known, and we talk about his, um, his TCP session hijack, he was quite a hacker, uh, but at the same time, probably better known as a social engineer than just about anything. So for example, um, this is how he got the uh, source code to the Motorola, Motorola Ultralight at that time, the world's most advanced cell phone. He said he was, uh, got an idea, he, he went to a phone booth, he called the 800 number for Motorola, um, could I sell your engineering please, and then they switch him over. All right, who works on the Microtech products? Oh, that's Pam Dillard's group. Pam's on vacation, would you like to speak to Alicia? Sure. Alicia gets on the phone and goes, hi, this is Rick. Pam told me I, uh, you could help me now that he's got her name. And uh, it took, well, she emailed it to him. It took all of 15 minutes, he said. By the time he went home, she had already emailed it. So um, it's really tough. And, and it works because you want to trust people. I, I don't want to think that everybody's out to, to sneak me or, you know, to steal my money. Um, my uh, uh, Tom, our our, uh, our uh, partner here in this, is going to be you know doing the labs. Uh, Tom, uh, you know, is my martial arts instructor, and he told me years ago when he met his uh, his future in-laws. He's sitting at the dinner table, and father-in-law says, um, "Hey, could you pass me uh, the butter?" And he went to get the butter. His father smacked him in the head, and he goes, "What happened, Mr. Karate Expert?" What are you supposed to be on guard all the time? You know, so it's tough. You can't be on guard all the time. You can't, um, you know, constantly just distrust and keep your guard up. You can't get any work done, right? So we gotta we gotta lower our guard to get any, anything done. So what we're doing here is hacking the human, right? So uh, again, it's going back we're at reconnaissance. Uh, we we figure out who works there. We also identified what machines, what OSs, what other infrastructure, what applications. But getting back to who. Some really great hacks over the last couple of years where people actually will find a key individual and spearfish that person. So, um, uh, still, you know, a little bit under wraps maybe, but the, the RSA hack of uh, a year or so ago where they, they uh, had taken advantage of some um, uh, a, a vulnerability in Adobe, was able to get a reverse shell. How do I get you to do that? In fact, uh, a really bad one. Not too many people really know that this uh, has gone down yet, and it's been a, a while. So one of the worst ones was Sicky Pot. Sicky P O T. Now Sicky Pot was identified uh, many years ago, but it was only in about July that we realized of 2012, not even a year ago, um, how we realized how bad it was. Uh, so Sicky Pot uh, takes advantage of an Adobe uh, vulnerability, given it a reverse shell. You create a, um, a, a file and you get somebody to click on it. Well, how do I get you to click on it? Well, Sicky Pot actually uh, does something else too. Sicky Pot can query a CAC. This is a computer access card used by the people in our Department of Defense. So uh, the Sipper net, they have uh, top secret stuff, is on a totally different network. But everything on secret and below is available on the internet if you plug in your CAC. Sicky Pot knows how to query the CAC. And just because you have, say, secret clearance, it doesn't mean secret clearance everywhere, you have secret clearance to different categories, maybe FBI and engineering or whatever. It reads your category set and will attempt to download everything. Now, how did they get the people to click on it? Well, if you're spearfishing DOD people, 
How about uh, sending out PDFs uh, in emails, maybe in social networking sites, Facebook, LinkedIn, anything from fear tactics? They're going to change our, our benefits. Did you hear about that? Click here if you want to say no, and they click on that. Or free tickets to the Army-Navy game. If you're rooting for our, and, and people click it, and it's just so easy, and I'm not invulnerable. Um, so I always warn people that uh, the best defense is not start trouble because if somebody wanted to break into me, um, get me at a bar uh, after I've had a few drinks, come up to me and tell me, you're that guy from Gung Ho, I love your music, and I will start doing stupid things. So let's look at some of the common tactics. So again, what is social engineering? It's hacking the human. It's not just calling on the phone, it's going in person. It's uh, sending voicemails, these are sometimes called vishing attacks. The emails, the phishing attacks, phony SMS messages, smishing attacks. So many ways to get there. Now, if I wanted to do it in person, say I just wanted to try and get into your building, there's two basic ways. I could claim authority. I could just walk in there. My mom told me years ago that if you walked into a building and you had a clipboard and a pen behind your ear, you could likely get past any security guard. What did they ask you something and you turn around and go, hey, you work here? Could you tell me where the fire doors, the exits of these, uh, uh, this building is? How many do you have here? I need to see these. And they will likely, oh my gosh, he had a clipboard and a pen. So that's two-factor authentication, you know, if it's just the pen. Uh, so it very likely work. But sometimes people will be very suspicious and they're not going to let you get authority. They're like, I'm sorry. You're not going to push me around. So you go the other way. Like, oh, dude, I hate to ask you to do this, but this is like the third time this week I left my badge at home and I'm going to get fired, dude. Please, I'm sorry. I need this job. I need it. I just had a baby. I cannot afford it. No, all right, all right. So two basic ways, and you want to trust people, and, and it's going to happen. Um, they do it on social network sites, though, all the time. One of the funniest ones, uh, and uh, Robin Sage, and I... Um, I have to admit, I did see my friend had this this uh, this person in his Facebook, and uh, I was wow, he's got an attractive little friend here. Let me take a look at her. She's a pen tester. Wow, this woman's worked on a lot of stuff. She's done penetration testing through the DoD, and she's oh my gosh, she loves nothing more than breaking into networks. I would love to meet this next time I see my friend Bob. I'm going to ask him about Robin. Um, I didn't try to click uh, like. Many people did. Turns out it was a guy. It was a security professional. Um, oh, I forget his name now. Uh, uh, Ryan, um, uh, 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 Ryan, uh, Ryan Thomas. I believe. And he uh, just collected all kinds of information. And it was so embarrassing. Um, there you go. Thomas Ryan. There you go. Uh, well, security problems revealed. Using those contacts, she preferred men and women of all ages, uh, and, and almost all of them worked in the military uh, or some contracting company. Uh, using these, she gained access to uh, many email addresses, bank accounts, uh, learned the location of secret military units uh, based on Facebook photos. You know, um, I have a hard enough time securing myself. I have a brother who's also a musician. I know when I get a beautiful girl on the side of Facebook and it says, look who's been trying to find you, there's no way that 20-something girl is actually trying to find me. But my brother will click on that and think, oh, but I'm in a band and I color my hair, Larry, so, you know, I'm not like you. So, uh, we're suckers, it could always happen. Now, there's a term you might see on your test that I've never heard of before, but once I knew the term, it makes sense. Uh, reverse social engineering social engineering, and you'll tell you it involves sabotage, advertising, and assisting. All right, now say I, um, I maybe I'm, I'm a temp or I'm a low-level user at some company, and I want to get some information uh, from this, this VP or something, and I sit near a printer. I can go up to that printer and I turn off, say, IP. It doesn't work anymore. And then I see him come out, and he's like, oh, my document, where is it? It's not coming. i got to get this out. And I, I'm sorry, uh, I couldn't help over here. And you, is there a problem? And he goes, oh, this printer. Is just, well, you know, I used to work on these, actually. Let me, let me see if I can. Oh, wait a minute. I think here's what happened. It somehow lost its setting, and it works. And he's like, hey, you, you're a good guy. So now I've just did something to gain somebody's trust. So again, on your test, that's known as reverse social engineering. And please remember the steps. I, I sabotaged, I broke it myself. I advertise that I'm capable of help, uh, you know, fixing that. And I assist you, and now I gained a little trust. You're a guy I can trust. Now, um, 
Uh, my my uh, martial arts coach uh, uh, my, and, and Tom's, uh, the late uh, great Joe Lewis, passed away last August, um, used to say something that Tom and I would debate, and, and uh, I, I agree with Joe right away. He would say that a better trained army will beat a better equipped army. And Tom said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, I think I, I can come up with an analogy right away, Tom. Um, when I was a kid, and again, I grew up in North Philadelphia, in the Logan section of Philadelphia, there was a time, I'm going to try and keep the story short and... and, and reveal too much what happened, but uh, true story, a buddy of mine comes up to me late at night and he said that um, somebody had just pulled a gun on him, threatened him with the gun, uh, and actually shot at his feet in the old dance type of thing. And this infuriated me, and I said, let's go get him. And he said, you're crazy. And I said, he didn't see me, dude. He doesn't know what I look like, but he's, he's got a gun. I said, just show me where he is. So he walked and I saw the guy and, and he was drunk. Yeah, that was the other thing. He said some drunk did it. So I figured he'd also be a little bit of a sucker for this. He wouldn't be on his, uh, his wits. And, um, you know, I always tell people that, uh, you know, when you look at martial arts and you want to be a well-rounded fighter and you look at the UFC and people end up on the ground, that's not really how street fights end in my experience. They end with a sucker punch. And that's because I don't say ready, set, go. So if I were to say ready, set, go with this guy, he's armed. He has a gun. I have no chance. So I didn't say, ready, set, go. I said, excuse me, sir, do you have a match? And the funny thing is, I didn't even have a cigarette. I just kind of had my hand like this. When he bent down to get the match, I then uh, took care of him. We disarmed him and, and we were able to, uh, whatever, defeat the attacker. Um, and it was all based on social engineering. And, and I know that I'm just a sucker to this, too. So uh, I've been studying martial arts most of my life, and most of my friends are not afraid of me either because they're also from North Philly. Everybody in Gung Ho is from either Logan and Doug's from even worse. He's from Nice Town. Uh, and we know that, look, you can have a black belt, but we got a black belt and tire iron, and you don't have eyes in the back of your head. Your best defense is training. As Joe Lewis says, uh, you got to train people that when people say, hey, I need my password reset, they might not really be a, a valid person. Uh, I see it a lot in the hotel. Uh, so many hotels, and they've gotten so much better in the Beltway area. Uh, I, they've been trained. But um, most hotels, I could go up to the front desk, say, hey, I'm in room whatever, 607, and I locked my key in there. And they'll just print it right out. They won't ask me my, if I, maybe they ask me my name, but very rarely outside of the Beltway does anybody ask me for ID. It's tough. Your best defense is, is training. Uh, but of course, I always say your, your best defense in the big picture is don't start trouble with people because anybody can be victim to this. Okay, now, when you're taking your test, uh, you may want to be aware of uh, a, a category uh, created by, uh, in my experience, Dr. Eric Cole, uh, a very well-known researcher in this field. And um, Dr. Cole uh, presented four basic types of people that could abuse uh, uh, privileges to gain unauthorized access. Now, you have the pure insider, and this is an employee who's doing something you shouldn't be doing. Uh, insider associate would be a contractor, a guard, and cleaning staff are great. In fact, that's a great, great person to impersonate. A, a lot of people tell me um, either a cleaning staff or a, um, like a pizza delivery person. They're going to open that door for you. Uh, but uh, actually, I'm probably more like an insider affiliate, that pizza guy. An insider affiliate, and this may become important in your near future, it could be a family member, a friend of some employee, or maybe in the case of your test, a client. So uh, a client may, in your near future, uh, befriend one of the employees, but then when they're not looking, use their ID badge to gain unauthorized access. In which case, uh, using Dr. Ari Cole's uh, uh, classification here, we would call them an insider affiliate. The out, out, uh, last category is the outside affiliate, and this is somebody who's not really supposed to be in the company. They could be somebody outside in the parking lot just hacked their wireless or kid across the street peeking in your window. All right, so I hope that completes um, at least what you need to know for the CEH test and also provides a good introduction to just how effective social engineering is. There's a, an old saying, you can't fix stupid. You can do your best. My mom's tried, but I still do stupid things all the time. Thank you. Now, we hope you've enjoyed this free module, but there's lots more. The Cyber Kung Fu course has 29 videos in all and will really help build you a solid understanding of the CEH version 8 curriculum. Don't forget, if you prefer to attend one of the Secure Ninja's courses in person at any of our training locations, you really need to visit secureninja.com slash specials for some amazing discounts and other deals. I'm Alicia Webb. Happy training. Secure Ninja TV is brought to you by secureninja.com, a world leader in cybersecurity training and certification. 
Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. Secure Ninja, forging cybersecurity experts.